personal views and opinions expressed by our podcast guests are their own and are not legal advice or official statements by their organizations. Hello, my name is Debbie Reynolds. This is the Data Diva Talks Privacy Podcast, where we discuss data privacy issues with industry leaders around the world with information the businesses need to know now. I have a special guest on the show, uh, Brad Hawkins. He is the uh, CEO of SaferNet, a cyber safety and internet control app, and he hails from Colorado. Hello, Brad. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's uh, a great honor and privilege. Yeah. Um, some people say that I'm, I have a friend, because uh, Katrina Destre, she says I'm sort of a scout. So I I like to look on LinkedIn and find people who are doing like interesting things and saying stuff. So I think the thing that attracted me about your profile, you know, um, you're you're definitely into cyber awareness and trying to, to educate people about kind of cyber risks. So I thought this would be a fun thing to talk about and also talk about your trajectory um, in cyber and what you're doing with SaferNet. I think it's really cool. So give me a little bit of background about you, you know, your journey and also what you're doing with SaferNet. Well, thank you so much. And I, I'm glad I'm glad that you noticed. We, we, we try to actually write a blog uh, once a day from somebody on our team. So we're, we're trying to post a blog either on our uh, SaferNet website or our SaferNet business website, um, alternating uh, every day just to try to keep people up on really what's going on. And uh, it's it, when we first took on that challenge, I thought there's no way we're going to get a blog a day. I mean, it's just, but we probably have enough um, information to probably do a couple blogs a day if we had the manpower to do it. But uh, thanks for noticing. It's it's great to know that people are paying attention and being aware of, of what's happening out there. But um, to ask your question, um, uh, SaferNet, we we so love the ability that we've we've been able to create is to keep people safe online. And safe includes um, uh, keeping people private and keeping people from. Uh, uh, from being in a place of, of exposing everything that they, they find important to themselves. But we have, uh, SaferNet is a, is a very cool thing. And, and I can say that because uh, much smarter people than I develop it. I just come up with some crazy ideas and they, they actually are able to figure out how to make it happen. But uh, what we've been able to do is we've created a 24-7 always-on VPN um, and the reason that I highlight that is that most VPNs, although everybody should have a VPN to be able to be safe and private online, most VPNs don't get used because people forget to turn them on or they, they do one or two things before they turn it on and they expose themselves to all kinds of horrible um, viruses and issues um, in, that, in that time where it's not turned on. So ours is 24 seven always on, it turns on when you turn on your device. Um, and then within that VPN, we run virus protection so that we're blocking viruses before they actually get to the device. And so um, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing technology that, to be able to get it to the place where, where we're not dealing with viruses on the device, we're stopping them before they get there. And then within that entire structure in a dashboard that, that the VPN runs through, uh, we also have 200 internet controls to allow an administrator to be able to turn on and off portions of the internet or to actually see the traffic that's going through there and control that from a, from a distance. And so um, we're, we're really excited about what it is that's going on and why we're able to uh, do such a great job in, in keeping people safe and private. Excellent. Now, <clears throat> is your product, I want to make sure people are clear about this, is your product a business-to-business product or is it a business-to-consumer or both product? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we are both, actually. We, we have a uh, um, business-to-consumer and a business-to-business product. Um, our business-to-business product has 
uh, some different layers of, of uh, administration added to it, um, but it's a very similar product to the business to consumer product. Uh, but as far as we're concerned, we believe anybody that has a device, whether you're in business or whether you're a, a, a mom taking care of kids or uh, a dad trying to, to oversee what's going on in his family or a, uh, a, a boss that's taking care of, of a, a business, everybody has devices connected to the same internet. And so our product is designed to help everybody with devices. Right. I, I like what you're saying, um, especially because I feel like people get confused about what they need, right? So they may buy a product that only covers one area and not other, another. And I think consumers just aren't educated about all the different things that they need. So I'm glad to see that you guys have a product that sort of covers kind of the concerns that people have so that they're like, okay, well, you know, some people are like, okay, I bought this one product and, and then that's it. Like, I, I don't need anything else. So being able to combine those types of protections, especially at a device level, I think is really key. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's part of our, was part of our research in the beginning is just talking to people when they, when we do some interviews, they say, well, we have this product and so we feel like we're safe or we have this product and so we we're, we're private. And, and so when, when we looked at that, it's that the consumer is looking for a product to do the job. Now we all know in cybersecurity that you can't just have one thing. You can't just have virus protection and feel like you're safe, or you can't run just a VPN and feel like, Oh, I'm taking care of all, all of our issues. So the question that I asked my developer is how do we develop a product that includes the major portions of cybersecurity into one product so that the consumer can just simply look at it and say, oh, if I just get that, I'm going to, I'm going to do 90% of my cybersecurity safety. And so that's where, where we came up with the idea of being able to put this together is combining those three major components of cybersecurity of a, a, a VPN, which includes that 24 seven, always on, the, the virus protection that everybody knows you, you need to have virus protection, and then internet controls to be able to stop uh, traffic from going into the most dangerous areas of cybersecurity. And so that's where we've been um, so excited to be able to provide a tool that brings so much to the table. And what's nice is that you know we're able to, because we're doing it at such bulk, we're able to do it for basically the price of one as opposed to having to pay for all three. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, tell me a little bit about, just in your experience, you know, I, I, I see, you know, the stuff that you guys post, you know, you post a lot about like the news and, you know, different hacks and ransomware and best ways for people to, to be safe and stuff like that. But wh where, you know, just in your experience, what area that businesses fall down on where you think, oh my God, I can't believe they didn't do like just this basic thing. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, what, what's interesting to me is that the entire world has gone um, off site, you know, it, during COVID, everybody says, okay, well, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm leaving the, the four walls of my office and I'm going to work from home. And then the cybersecurity experts from the office that spent so much time building firewalls in the office to keep people safe, now that their firewalls are basically useless because now everybody's working from home. And you know, there's there's several different protocols that different companies are using to keep people safe. Um, and one of the things that I find fascinating is that that they say, okay, you're not allowed to connect to our office without using the, the office VPN that we create. So, you know, they, they're, they're off with their, their computer, they're going to Starbucks, they're traveling, they're doing all kinds of stuff. But when they access the, the, the server at their office, they have to turn on their VPN and connect. That is, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody, but that is one of the funniest things that I've heard because 
the intent of the firewall is to make sure a firewall in an office is to make sure that no devices come in with viruses or issues um, so that it doesn't infect the network. And so now all these computers are going home and to Starbucks and to all these different places, but they're not staying within that firewall. They're not. So when you're at Starbucks and you open up your laptop or you use your phone and you're not connected to a VPN, you're not in that private secure tunnel, any virus that is out there, you're collecting. It's getting on your device. And then when you actually connect with your VPN to the server in your office, that, that computer is already infected. So then you have a beautiful um, VPN connection tool to connect, to send all of the viruses that are on that device right into the server, into the office. And it's a much greater risk that just doesn't make any sense why people are, are allowing that in, in this day and age. So that's the reason that I feel like it's so darn important. If you've got a 24 seven always on VPN, no matter where you are, you're walking around with that computer or that cell phone connected within the firewall of the office. It's always being protected. It's always being um, uh, controlled and managed. And it's not running a risk of delivering all the viruses, the, the Trojans or the, the ransomware or whatever it might be, right into the office. It, it, it's a different level of security that most people aren't paying attention to. Wow, I love that. Uh, I never thought about it that way. That's so true. So I think even before COVID, so this is a, to me maybe a blind spot that we had all along and then COVID exacerbated the issue. And the issue was, you know, I get this analogy about the castle. So the issue was people thought, okay, if you're in the castle, you have all this protection and all this stuff, but people leave the castle, right? People go home, people, like you say, go to Starbucks or whatever. So they don't have that same level of protection. And I feel like if people weren't thinking about that, or companies weren't thinking about that before COVID, they certainly weren't thinking about it after because they were thinking about, okay, we have to continue business. And, you know, I guess what we're doing, you know, within the company, as long as it can connect to, you know, the, the services, we're doing fine, but then you're basically widening risk. The risk you had already, you're making it even larger. Exactly. That's exactly right. And, and you find that, that people don't realize they're at risk. And that's the reason why we write so many blogs and, and trying to educate people because really, if they understood the level of risk they were running in, they'd never do it. But out of convenience, they feel like, well, I don't want to use a VPN. I don't want to do, uh, you know, anything that would slow down my internet connection. Um, you know, it's kind of a hassle dealing with the different VPNs, because if I want to go to a website, I don't want to get blocked for, for any reason whatsoever. And, and you know, all of these convenient factors that we look at in, in, the, in using these different tools, well, yeah, sometimes you might run into a couple of minor issues, but the reality is, is that you're exposing yourself to a lot of risks. It's kind of like, I don't want to deal with the, the hassles of locking my house when I leave, because when I come home, it's really easy to be able to open the door and walk in. Well, yeah, but if you take the time to put your key in and turn it, um, you know that everything is still there when you come back. So it's it's one of those simple little things that we look at and say, how do we take care of that? Um, so, but I agree with you. There's a lot of different issues that are very, very simple to do to protect ourselves, but we just don't do it for one reason or another. Right, right. And then let, let me talk a little bit about um, permissions. So just to give, give some background on this, um, you know, I used like the Target hack many years ago, right? That's a very famous one uh, where uh, Target had a third party contractor. They had credentials and those credentials were um, taken, used by a bad actor to be able to get into Target and then they stole all this information and it was a huge deal, right? So right. my, and, and a lot of times people tell this story, it's sort of like, 
about a cautionary tale related to the risk of third party, which is, yeah, no, okay, yeah, yeah. There's a risk of third party, but my thing is, even though the third party got in, it should have been limited in what they could do once they were in. So part of it is, you know, maybe back to this castle and that analogy, you know, if if someone were to get into the castle, or let's say someone's already in the castle, <laughs> you know, how can you limit the damage that someone can do when they're in? So part of that to me is like a mindset change. You know, that is that that is a great question as well. Um, and the, the, the reason is, is that one of the things that I love about the way that our product works is that we connect a VPN to each individual device. And that VPN, and it, it's just simply downloading an app and connecting it to the account in the cloud. And so that VPN is, is siloed to, to make sure that there is uh, safety within that, that device. So for example, if somebody would click, accidentally click on a ransomware email, so they click on that ransomware email that ran, and, and we all know that it's just a disaster after you click on that ransomware email because that ransomware then uh, can, uh, gets access to all the different components of the network. And then it has the ability to shut everything down or, you know, a Trojan, as you know, can then somebody can get into every place that that particular login has access to. But when you're siloed into a, a one, um, uh, uh, one tunnel, one VPN tunnel, if you accidentally click on that wrong email, it is siloed into that one device. It cannot get into the rest of the network. And by making sure that it can't get into the rest of the network, what you're doing is you're also not allowing it to communicate outside of the network to its host. So when you're connected into that siloed device, worst case scenario, and because of some virus connect, um, cleaning, it doesn't happen, but worst case scenario, that one device is, is uh, sacrificed where there's, there's a, a virus put on that one device, but it doesn't connect to the host. So it can't activate its ransomware or whatever it's doing. And number two is it can't get out of that siloed VPN to connect to the rest of the network. It's all going back up to the cloud and in the cloud, it gets scrubbed viruses and it, it stops it. So because of the architecture that we operate under, um, that aspect of things won't happen, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love that. I, I have always been, to me, I've always been about the inside of the castle, what happens, <laughs> what happens there. So I'm glad to hear that this is what you're doing. And you're right, like devices, they're like the gateway into the network. So if you're doing things to protect things at a device level, like you say, the kind of having your own tunnel, you know, it helps you be able to thwart any, you know, attack that could actually bloom into something, you know, far worse. Um, I want to talk a bit about ransomware. So I saw an article you guys posted about, <clears throat> you post a lot about ransomware attacks and things that happen. Uh, but one, one article you posted caught my attention. And I think this is a great cautionary tale for organizations. And it is, you know, obviously, you know, no one wants to be ransom. No one wants ransomware, right? But, you know, there are companies that, are successful in thwarting those attacks. But even if you're successful, you can still have business disruption. So just because you successfully shut it down, it doesn't mean that your business hasn't been negatively impacted. No, you're, you're exactly right. You will end up getting hurt dramatically if you deal, if you have to deal at any level with a ransomware attack, that is, I think uh, across the board, I think everybody would agree that's one of the worst attacks that we can run into, um, and that's the reason that we uh, we feel it is so strong and so important to always stay within the proper uh, protocol. So there's there's 
there's no level of education that you can educate all your employees or even your kids to get uh, people to not click on um, very tempting clicks. I mean, I, I, the other day I got one from, I use a Verizon uh, uh, cell phone and I got a, an email saying that, uh, that my, my bill was past due. Click here to find out uh, you know, what, what, what I have to do about it. Well, number one, I know that it wasn't past due. And number two, you look up in the, in the URL and it's not a Verizon URL, um, but it looks so legitimate that I was tempted to click on it. Um, so you can't count on everybody never clicking on those things. But the question is, when you click on it, what is the worst case scenario that can happen? Well, when you're running a, a always on VPN, if you click on that, it's going to, uh, you're going to figure it out quickly because it's not going to react the way you want it to react. And, and hopefully you look and see what, what's happening. But um, number two, if it is not allowed to communicate with its host, it can't say, hey, this was just activated. Um, it's not going to cause any damage to that. And so at that point, then your virus scrubber can clean off and, and do what it needs to do. But that's what has to be done quickly is to make sure that it doesn't get out into the network uh, to make sure that it's able to shut it. It can't shut down or get access to the data if you're locked into one device and one device only, it, it stays safe within that. But uh, you know, you're right, Vi uh, ransomware is just devastating and we've got to be able to uh, protect our companies and, and uh, make sure that we're not vulnerable to that. The reality is, is we know that that 55% of, of attacks uh, are successful and we don't even notice them. We don't even realize that they're out there. And so when that is happening, uh, some businesses could have a virus going through it right now, and it's just not activated yet. And at some point it gets clicked over and gets activated. And, and you know, the reality is, is that most businesses go out of business after a ransomware attack. Right. And, and not only that, um, you know, people, maybe they think about it in the movies, right? So in the movies, someone you know, a um, cyber criminal gets in your, your, your organization and then they know where the keys to the kingdom are and they do all this stuff really fast. But a lot of times, you know, once a cyber criminal gets in your network, they can just watch. So right. they may not do anything for six months or a year. Uh, you may not notice. And that's part of the art of doing cybercrime because uh, you don't want to be noticed you want to be able to get information you know maybe they want to watch the email traffic and watch how people communicate and then start sending emails from different mailboxes and saying things that you know pe people that you know wouldn't typically say yeah you're you're exactly right and that's the that's the scary part for any business owner is how is anybody in already? Um, you know, do, do we have any breaches that we don't know about? And what is the danger of that? Uh, so yeah, that is a, a very real uh, issue. Uh, I think I, I said earlier, 55% uh, of, of attacks go and notice 75% of, uh, of hacks are successful. Uh, very few um uh, attacks actually get noticed and stopped. And, and that's where we think it's so darn important to be able to, to be running uh, the proper virus protection and, and or data protection uh, all the time. You can't, you can't go for any period of time without running the proper virus and data protection. I agree. So, so how do we well, well here, here's, here's the problem, the age-old problem that we all have in kind of privacy and cybersecurity. Uh, one is some people tend to be reactive to things. So I think this is even taught in business school. So you don't worry about a problem until you have it. And so the problem with privacy and cybersecurity is that by the time you have a problem, it could literally be too late. <laughs> 
Uh, so you can't really wait. So how how do we move from this reactive thing that people have been taught for you know decades to kind of this proactive stance with cybersecurity and privacy? Yeah, that, and <laughs> the funny part of that is is that um, you know we're we're all so busy as a small business owner. You're just running around trying to do absolutely everything. And you look at, well, I don't need to deal with the virus protection because, you know, I've heard this so many times, I don't have anything that people would like to steal anyway. Um, You know, data is what people want to steal. But, uh, uh, and if if somebody doesn't have data, you probably don't have a device. And so the, but the reality is, is that people are, are getting in and just sitting and waiting, getting into a network, sitting and waiting, just like you said, until there's something there that they can take. Um, you know, it's it, oftentimes it's six to nine months before someone actually realizes they have a breach. And, and it's because they, you know, credit cards or something gets out on the, on the web and all of a sudden things come crushing down around you. Um, I believe that that to get to the place where you have, you know, we've talked about, you know, our VPN, we've talked about our virus protection and our internet controls. If you have those basic simple things established, which is as simple as downloading an app uh, and connecting it to the cloud that everybody in the world knows how to do at this point, at least if you're using devices, um, when when you have that in place, you don't have to think about it anymore. And that's really what a business owner needs is, is something that they know that they can set and walk away from and be, be done with that job so that they can concentrate on what makes them money. Um, and it's kind of, like, kind of like buying insurance is that, you know, you don't buy liability insurance because you had an issue that there was liability on your part. You buy liability insurance so that if something happens in the future, you don't end up losing your business. And so from, from my perspective, that's the reason that we had to build this in such a simple, straightforward, easy manner so that anybody could just simply download something, uh, wash their hands of, of it, and just let it operate behind the scenes to make sure that there's consistent protection put in place. Um, but I agree with you. The majority of people, um, they they want to sit back and wait until something happens and believe that there's there's not an issue until there is an issue. Well, I can I can almost guarantee that every single person has been hacked. You just may not know about it. Um, we have this interesting piece of our product. It's called the Entourage. Uh, and if somebody has a better name for it, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, we've, we've struggled with a name, but, uh, but it's this thing that, that, you know, just while we've been talking for the last 30 minutes or so, um, my devices have probably been attempted to be hacked maybe thir- 20 to 30 times. I mean, it just happens all the time. And of course, with our, with our VPN and, and our virus protection, we're blocking that on a regular basis. But we expose, we show the IP address and we show the, the information that is being, that's trying to access us. And the amount of attempts that happens on my devices on a regular basis or any of our customers' devices is almost mind boggling. When I show it to people, they're like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Um, but it shows the number of times that w- somebody is trying to reach into my device and take my data. Now, some of those are, are people that I've previously given access to, and they just continue to take. Um, others are malicious attempts, and I get to block them before they even try. But when you see the amount of, of attempts, you know that there's, if you don't have regular protection, you know that you're being hacked on a regular basis. Uh, that, there's something that, that you say, uh, and you mentioned it just a few minutes ago, and this is kind of the point about simplicity. So I feel like, you know, I told a friend of mine, I feel like cybersecurity 
and even privacy folks, maybe we need like a PR campaign where we explain things in simple ways and have it be more simple for the people who really need the help. So talk to me about the importance of simplicity uh, in cybersecurity in terms of how you're communicating it with the people who really need the help. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's one of, uh, uh, one of the biggest marketing strat- struggles uh, that, that I think anybody in cybersecurity has is that cybersecurity is such a technical back end. Uh, um, there's so much uh, technical work that is done to get it to the place where the data in a network is safe. Um, and even the term network, you know, it's fascinating when you when you talk to people about a network, people have all kinds of different um, uh, definitions of a network. Uh, and it's interesting, we, we did a little re, uh, um, um, research on the term network and uh, just, just asking people, what do they think of when they think about a network? And in cybersecurity, you know exactly, you're talking about a group of devices that are all connected together. But in, in the outside of cybersecurity conversation, people think about networking in a, in a marketing group or your network of people that you are friends with. I mean, everybody has different versions of, of that word. And so it's our job to deliver our message in the simplest way that we can um, and to get it to the place where non-cybersecurity people understand what we're doing and why it's so important to be able to do. And that's why, uh, you know, I still don't think we are as simple of communicators as we need to be. Um, I think we are a little simpler than, than we were before and a little simpler than others. But when we describe our, uh, our, we want to take your device and put it into a, a, a tube and scramble that data so that if anybody tries to access in there, they, they won't be able to get it. And if they do, it's going to be scrambled so you can't see it. And then within that tube, we have virus protection so that if there's a virus that gets inside that tube, we're stopping it before it actually gets to the device. Um, in most cases, people can gather that information, understand it and say, gosh, I'd like my data to be scrambled so that if somebody gets it, they have no idea what they got. Um, And so if we're able to continue to work on that language to make it simpler, I think what's going to happen is people will feel more comfortable saying, oh, I need that. I want to get that. But what I found is this is an interesting thing is I was talking to a guy that um, ran a very large business. He sold it for millions of dollars. Um, he had always run proper protocol in, in uh, virus protection for his business. Um, he had an IT guy that took care of it all. And I was talking to him after he sold it. And I said, okay, well, what do you do for virus protection now? And he said, oh, I, I don't even deal with that. I, I used to have people that protected all of our data. And now uh, that I don't, I'm, I'm retired. I don't have anything that needs to be uh, protected. I don't even, I don't even worry about it anymore because it's too confusing. And for someone with the intelligence that they ran a multi-million dollar operation and they could not come up with a, a strategy to understand the cybersecurity components, that is completely on the cybersecurity side that we're not communicating in a simple way to get someone with that level of intelligence to comprehend the importance of it. So uh, that's why I think that simplicity just has to be in place that, you know, just simply download an app and, and allow us to keep your data in a safe connected tube so that you don't end up losing uh, control of your company. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with that. Um, tell me, we're going to segue a little bit into privacy. So tell me, I like to say cybersecurity and privacy have a symbiotic relationship. Tell me from your experience how cyber and privacy can work together. You know, I do agree with you. I think cybersecurity and privacy are hand in hand, um, where I look at at running a VPN is essential for privacy. 
Um, it, it's just absolutely essential. Virus protection is cybersecurity portion of what we do. Um, you know, when you when you're thinking about um, not wanting people to have access to your data, when you're thinking about not wanting people to be able to know what you're doing and uh, and get access to it, you think about why. Why is it important that you have privacy? Well, a lot of times people will say, I, I don't know why people would want my stuff, so I don't care. Nobody can do anything to hurt me. Other times, after they've gotten burned a couple of times, they realize, oh, wait a minute, I need to be able to step in there and have some protection. But in my mind, just, uh, you know, as we know, some of the largest companies in the world uh, and the most wealthy companies in the world have free products. So you look at that and say, how in the world can that happen? You know, places like Google, how, how does Google provide everything that they provide for free? Well, it's because they're taking all of your personal information, gathering it and selling it. And you look at that and say, okay, well, that, that helps me and I don't get hurt by it. So I may as well just let them do it. But yet that data is so valuable that we've created multi-billion dollar companies with our data. How about if we flip that a little bit? If we stop that and say, you know what, our data is so valuable. I don't know why it's valuable because you're taking it and selling it and making money. But what if we flipped that and said, if it's so valuable, then you have to pay me for it instead of you just take it from me and sell it. Um, now, I don't necessarily believe that it's not valuable, but for those people that believe it's not valuable, uh, I would say that, you know, it's time that we reverse it and hold on to that data. So in my mind, if we're able to stop people from getting data through, through SaferNet or through other means, um, and then we, we starve the, the companies from being able to get our data, then we have the ability to turn it around and, and sell it to them if we choose to. But then we need to understand what that data is and to decide if we really want to give it up for a dollar or not give it up for a dollar. But it's it's a little bit of a free for all where, you know, we like to say, well, I don't have anything of value. So does it matter if I take it? Well, how are we getting these billion dollar companies if they if you really have something that is not of value? So that's a big question. But I think it's highly important that we start taking our data private, making it to the place where we are the ones making our decisions on what we're giving up and what we're not. Right. I think it is all about agency. And so, you know, right now we feel like we have no control over our data and what happens to it. And we have a lack of visibility in what, what is being done with this data. In some way, you know, I have friends in Europe, some who feel very passionate about, they don't like people to think about data in a monetized type of way because they feel like a very you know your data is a representation of yourself and stuff like that but I feel like if you don't put a price tag on it people don't understand you know maybe they'll think about it differently in that way right so maybe they'll think you know like on the dark web your health record is worth like you know 10 times more than your credit card information and why is that you know they can sell that to other people you know they can infer things about you they can put that information into risk models you know maybe you'll get turned down for insurance or something based on something that maybe was inferred somewhere that you are not aware aware of it may not even be true for that for that matter so i think you know for us being able to, I would like to know, even if, I, even if I decide I don't want to sell my data, I would love to know what it was, the value of it is to someone else. I, I completely agree. And that's the reason that we have this, this entourage feature in our, in our dashboard is to show people the data or the attempts to gather information off of our device to reveal it. Because as far as I know, there's nobody that's revealing this, this, uh, the, these attacks that, you know, this continual entourage that keeps trying to gather your information. Um, but when you start looking at it and looking at the companies and looking at the IP addresses and looking at, at what's, what's coming at you on a regular basis, and then you turn off SaferNet and you realize, 
wait a minute, all of those companies and, and IP addresses are now accessing my device. There's no way in the world you'd run without having um, having SaferNet or a, a, a similar type uh, product on your device to be able to make sure that you're you're stopping that uh, that entourage of just continual access to your devices. And it's just when you start realizing it, and it's it's just this horrible feeling that people can access your device, take whatever they want out of it, and you're sitting there and you have nothing to do about. It. You can't do anything to stop them. So yes, I agree. We need to be able to monetize what it is that we have and choose whether or not we want to sell it or not. But right. we, we need to get to the place where we stop these, these companies from being able to just gather our information for, for no value to us. Right. And, you know, I, I, I work at the intersection of um, like technology and law. So I talk a lot about both, you know, interchange back and forth. And even though we lack a, a strategy on a national level for data privacy, uh, we obviously we have it for protection, sort of nationally, but that's only because the 50 states have data breach notification requirements and data breach requirements uh, for different companies. But you know, I'm realizing, and I, I think it, this goes back to the point that I was trying to make about being proactive about stuff, because regulation, even though we need regulation, and there's a place for regulation. Um, regulation is too late and redress is too late uh, for the harm that can happen to people. So it's really important that we take these steps, whether they be, you know, organizational measures, technical measures to be able to protect the data, you know, protect privacy of people before it gets to a place where it has to get to, you know, a court system or something like that. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I agree. Uh, everything that has been happening has been happening too late in the chain because it's all after everybody has already lost what they are losing. And until there's consequences for that, it will continue to be that way. But that's why I believe that it's so important for people to be proactive in their privacy and 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 look at it is, <clears throat> excuse me, look at it as something that is important as opposed to um, not worth their time or, you know, I'm not really losing anything if I don't see that I've lost something. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody recently about the fact that you're losing data and, and he said, well, the way I see it and the way you describe it, it sounds like I'm sharing it because I'm not really losing it. I still have it. And, and it's just such an odd view because, and, and these large companies have just convinced us that somehow we are getting value out of it when the truth is they are getting value out of it. We're not getting value out of it. Um, now, they might be able to sell us something a little faster, but you know what? If you don't know what you need, if you don't know what you want uh, to go out and look for it yourself, then you probably don't need it or didn't even know that you wanted it. So it's not like we're going to lose anything. But if we don't take this privacy serious and be proactive to stop people from being able to gather our personal information, whether we know what they're using it for or not, it doesn't make any difference. They're still taking our personal information and gaining not just a little bit, but gaining an enormous amount of money based on this data. And so I, I couldn't agree with you more, Debbie, and I'm, I'm so grateful that you're, you're shining a spotlight on this because people need to understand that this is not okay. People are not allowed to take data, make a profit, and not value what it is, not give us value for what it is that they have. So, and, and that's, that's really a big reason why it's so important to me that we developed our product the way it is, is that we block people from gathering our personal information. We, you're, they're not allowed to gather our personal information unless we personally give them permission to get it. And if we give them permission to get it, then they can have it. But if we don't want them to get it, 
then we will block them from being able to access it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so if it were the world according to Brad, and we did everything you said, what would be your wish for privacy or cybersecurity in the world, whether it be, you know, technology, people, anything? <laughs> that, is, that is a funny question. <laughs> but uh, if it was the world according to, uh, to me, I would say that there is not a device that is allowed to access the internet without uh, proper virus protection and a strong 24 seven always on VPN. Um, that it, it would just, there's, there would be no connectivity without a VPN. And if people are using the internet without a VPN, um, it, it is to me one of the riskiest maneuvers that you can do. And it and really, the VPN is, is kind of the, the silver bullet to cybersecurity, in my opinion. But with combining the VPN with virus protection so that we're stopping the viruses before it actually reaches the device, it's like, I, it is to me the cool, when, when our developers came up with that strategy, I just thought that is the coolest thing. And I can't take credit for it because much smarter people were able to figure out how to make that happen. But the key is, is that we combine those aspects that make it so that you can use what my opinion is the greatest invention of all time since the industrial revolution is the internet. And to use it in a safe manner by simply having a device that scrambles your data and keeps people from accessing you it's like the biggest no-brainer ever in my mind. I like that answer. That's great. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how people can contact you and um, uh, your company if they're interested to learn more about SaferNet. I would love to, uh, to have people um, access SaferNet.com, S-A-F-E-R-N-E-T.com. Um, we have also have safernetbusiness.com, um, but it, it is as simple as um, create an account and downloading an app and uh, connecting that, that app to the account. I mean, it's just a, a simple little process that absolutely anybody that knows how to download an app can do. Although we've got tremendous customer service. Uh, we have people that that rave about our customer service because uh, our our customer service people truly truly care about our customers um, and you know they will spend whatever time need uh, need be to be able to get a, um, uh, a safer net operating correctly within within your network so um, but yes if you just contact us through safernet.com uh, we would love to take care of you very good. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you being on the podcast today. This was uh, very eye-opening and I'm glad you're able to share and definitely continue to share all the really great content and information. It's very educational and I think we all need to be reminded all the time about these things. Well, Debbie, you're doing a great, great thing, bringing awareness to these, these so, such important um, pieces of cybersecurity. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing such a valuable uh, um, uh, job for, for, the, for the community at large. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That's very sweet. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.